Shalom brothers and sisters and welcome to our happy Sabbath uh, sacrament blessing. Brother Carl's with us again and we're at his, his bungalow in Clay Cross. We just decided to call it Camelot. <laughs> and it's really good to be with you today as we we uh, bless the sacrament. So I asked if ye have your... Uh, bread and wine ready. Carl's about to light the peace candle and it's a real one. There we go, it's a candle of peace. And I think Kyle is going to say the opening prayer for us to invite the spirit. Good morning brothers and sisters, welcome to our happy Sabbath. I ask in the name of our Saviour Jesus Christ that you will all be blessed this day, that you will enjoy this pod broadcast, that all sufferings, miseries and diseases throughout this world, hatreds and animosities will cease. I say this truly in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes, uh, the Spirit's with us now. He's joined us. And uh, on this day, as we get ready to see uh, the new year in tomorrow is, I think it's New Year's Eve tomorrow morning. Yeah, 31st. Yep, so um, we look back on 2023 and, uh, well, I think in 2023 I moved to my new bungalow and it's the same for Kyle and we, we feel a bit better where we are now. Uh Things that are going on in the world are not too good uh, with the wars and stuff and they don't seem to be getting any better but we can pray that there will be peace and but I think the only way they can have peace is people having compassion for each other and uh, getting to know each other a bit more. So Lord as we come to the sacrament and you can find the sacrament prayers in uh, Moroni, which is the last like chapters in in the Book of Mormon, and uh, yeah. So the Book of Moroni, chapter one. So chapter one, chapter two, and it's chapter three which uh, gives us how we can say the sacrament. Hang on, I might be wrong. Yeah, it's chapter 5 in the, the book of Moroni. And uh, the manner of administering the wine, or the wine, behold, they took the cup. But uh, it's in chapter 4 where the bread is uh, is shared. So if you'd like to bow or kneel, I'll say the blessing on the bread. Mm -hmm. If you want to do the... The wine? Yeah. yeah. Or water. So Moroni chapter 4. And if you go down to verse 3, this is where the prayer starts. And I shall say that, I shall say it after that. After that, yeah. Yep. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to his mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshipping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. 
So if you'd like to bow or kneel as we prepare to read this. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments, which he hath given them, that they may always have the Spirit be with them. Amen. Amen. So now as we prepare to do the wine prayer, or Kyle prepares to do the wine prayer, uh, if you'd like to bow or kneel, whatever's best for you, and let us pray. Oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of Thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto Thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember Him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. So let us contemplate on the emblems we have just taken. Let's have time to think of the blood of Christ and what he did for us. He, he died and took upon us all our sins. Hi, my name's Jay, and I was asked to speak about how we each kind of go through struggles, and yet we all have a path to follow. It is individual to ourselves, and we are not just meant to blindly step. We are meant to, yes, walk in faith at times, but to do what we are asked to do. And to be open to understanding what that is and what that means. My number one priority is to try to seek the spirit and understand what my role is. My personal role. What J. What, what there is for me. And that is of utmost priority. I'm not a fan of autopilot and kind of a default of this is what you always do. I think we need to engage in our lives and not be AI, not be autopilot, not just follow for the sake of following, but do things with intention, with clear connection of what we need to do next and engage in that and be willing to ask for guidance and follow that guidance and know that what what's right for someone else or a lot of other people might not be right for me. I have had a few exceptions in my life. I had a situation where um, I was inspired by the Spirit to not wear my seatbelt that day and it saved my life. I am somebody who has always kind of found that I'm not seeking the exceptions to the rule, but sometimes they seem to find me. And I don't always know every answer, but I am willing to look a little deeper than a lot of people are and say, is there another perspective here that I might not have automatically looked at had I just been an autopilot? had I not truly connected with spirit. And when I was growing up, we had a lot of multiple choice tests. And um, at one point I was told, if you're not sure, go with the answer C. And I don't know why I'm kind of connected to that, but obviously you can associate C with 
the word Christ or clarity. You can also associate C with the other concept of S-E-E. It's not C as in the letter C, but C as in look. And sometimes I think we need to look more, whether it's in the media and the story about Israel going to war. Yes, there are people on both sides that are having conflict and causing conflict. But I would wonder if it's, hey, we are the victims here. And how much we need to look at the whole story. I've had multiple points in my life where without gathering additional data, I would have made poor choices had I not taken the time and questioned. And I encourage you to question for you, just like Noah wasn't told to go to Nineveh, Adam wasn't told to get the golden plates uh, or, you know, the Ten Commandments. For each time, we are told something that we need to learn, a message for just us. And I think it's really important to be open to that message and aware and see and look for things that are just for us because each of us has a calling. Each of us has a purpose. And we are not alone. There is a spirit there to guide us if we are open to learning from it and studying out our options and really looking at other perspectives. I grew up in a church situation where I assumed certain things were true. And I have since learned that Not all of those things that I believed were true are. I have seen people who were higher up in the church make some very poor decisions and that on some level, a church and many churches are much more about a corporation and protecting their growth than they are about people or Christ or love or compassion. And I would encourage each of us to seek to look at the big picture. And I'm not saying in any way that you shouldn't have a church or shouldn't seek a community of common believers. But there is a part of it that I would encourage you to keep your eyes open, to keep your heart open, to be willing to learn something different than you already knew. Because our lives are about progress and growth and learning. They are not supposed to be simple. If we have gifts and talents, we are supposed to use them and multiply them. One of my favorite parables is about 10 talents. As you know, in the scriptures, it talks about how the the master essentially went away and gave one of the servants five talents. And at this point, talents were gold coins. And one of them, two talents. And one of them, one talent. And they were asked to multiply them. And the master went away and then the master came back and said, you know, what have you done with the talents I gave you? And the one who had five had invested it and multiplied it and made it 10. The one who had two invested it and multiplied it and made it four. But the one who had one didn't feel like he had enough. So instead of investing it, he didn't use his talent wisely. He dug a hole and he buried it. And if we're hiding our talents, we're not developing our talents, we're not seeking to grow and learn, then when the master comes back, the one who had multiplied the five and made it ten was told, well done, thou good and faithful servant. 
The one who had two and multiplied it to four was told, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And the one who had one, who buried it, he said, you know, I could have at least got interest had I sent it to, you know, the, the bank, essentially. You didn't do anything with it. I'm going to take it away and give it to the one who had 10. Because instead of using it, instead of challenging yourself, you just buried it whole and tried to protect yourself and protect it. And it's not about staying where we are. It's about growing and learning and building and progressing. And life is not always fair. Some of us are given five talents, and whether that's monetary or whether that's gifts or whether that's, you know, connections with the spirit, whether that is five talents or two talents or one talent, we are all asked to multiply it. We are asked to progress it and grow it and develop. And as we do that, we will be blessed. But we need to take the initiative to grow, to learn, to progress, and to look around at options that are potentially wise options. Had it at least been invested and lost, there is a part of, yes, we want to take smart risks, but we all have to take a chance at some point and not just hold back and only do the things the way they've always been done. We need to take the opportunity to progress ourselves and learn how we can grow and progress. I know that for me, I have felt alone at times when I've kind of not followed the rest of the group. I know that I have been shamed or shunned at times. Um, I've been told that I'm not good enough or that I'm doing something wrong. But when I follow the Spirit, I know that I am rewarded greatly for it. And each of us has that opportunity. And it's, it's scary sometimes. It's a bit uncomfortable at times to be told that you're not doing it the way it's always been done. But we are asked to grow. And sometimes that means making changes. And I encourage you to be open to the spirit and the changes that can come as we seek to see as the Lord sees, and to grow and to take chances and know that while we feel alone, we are not alone. We can be connected through spirit and through community and know that there are others like us. Even though we don't see them, we must work as individuals and as a community to progress to a point where we can understand what we are called to do. There are both individual callings and group callings. And sometimes we have to step away from the group So know that you are not alone. There will be struggles. There will be challenges. There will be difficulties. But as you pray and seek to understand the Spirit and are open to the guidance and have faith and are willing to go and do the things the Lord commands, 
you will be blessed. It doesn't always make sense. It is not always easily understood how protection comes. You will not always see it coming, but it is there. And it is available to you as you seek to understand the spirit and follow that guidance and direction. Each of us has gifts and we are asked to use them and multiply them. There are the seven deadly sins. And I will tell you that I look at people sometimes and I'm like, wow, they have something that I don't have, whether it be a gift or money or whatever it may be. And we do need to remember to use what we are given to multiply. It's not about being out of control and angry and taking what is someone else's. It's about using what we have and being happy with it to progress ourselves. And as we do so, we can avoid the downfalls that come with sin and be at peace with what we are asked to do as individuals. There are so many blessings available to us if we continue to seek the will of God and understand who we are as children of God. I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So that brings us to the end of our sacrament service today. And uh, as it's coming towards, it will be our last one until next year. So we'll mm -hmm. see you next year. Yeah. <laughs> Shalom, brothers. God Shalom. bless and see you next year. Shalom, brothers and sisters. God bless and see you next year. See you next year and, and let's have God's blessing for that year for us. Amen. Amen.